eigenvectors belonging to different eigenvalues are independent. That is nice to know, of course. We're looking for them. It also assures that your matrix P is invertible if the eigenvectors for each eigenvalue are independent. They do not interfere with each other. In this video, we'll see why this is the case. We'll see a method which is called induction to prove this. This particular method to prove theorems is used in many proofs, so you have at least two good reasons to watch this video. Independence of eigenvectors. Let us have n different eigenvalues, lambda 1 to lambda n. a times v1 equals lambda 1 times v1, etc. Then we uh, have to show that the set of uh, uh, v1 to vn is independent. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use a method which is called proof by induction. What are we going to do? We are going to show that the statement is true for n is 1. And then we do a tricky step. We assume that the statement is true up till small n equals capital N. And using this information, we are going to prove that the statement is true for n equals capital N plus 1. And then we have proven it for all n. Why is that? Well, what we in fact do is we assume that the statement is true for, say, 3, and we prove with this information that this is true for 4. Or we assume that the statement is true for n equals 5, and we prove that it's true for n equals 6. But if I, uh, we also prove that it is, if it's true for 4, then it's true for 5. And we prove that if it's true for 5, then it's true for 6. So if it's true for 4, then it's true both for 5 and for 6, because 4 implies 5 and 5 implies 6. So if it's true for 3, then it's three true for 4. If it's true for 4, then for 5, then for 6. So if it's true for 2, then it's true also for 3. If it's true for 3, then for 4. If it's true for 4, then for 5. If it's true for 5, then for 6. So if it's true for 1, then it's true for 2. If it's true for 2, then for 3, etc. But we've proven it's true for 1. So if we prove it's true for 1, and we prove that given it's true for capital N, and show that it's then true for capital N plus 1, then we can do this cascade, and we have in fact proven that the statement is true for all uh, N. That's what we call proof by induction. How are we going to do it? in this case. Well, first we have to prove that it's true for capital N equals 1. Well, if I have a set consisting of only one vector, this set is obviously independent. We have eigenvectors, so it can't be the zero vector. So that's OK. Then we assume that the set Sn consisting of N, capital N, eigenvectors is independent. And with this assumption, we have to show that if we add one eigenvector, then the set is still independent. Now we are going to do the following trick. Suppose this statement would be not be true. That means that the v n plus 1, so suppose my next uh, vector which we added, suppose that that one depends on the first n. So v n plus 1 can be expressed in the first eigenvectors. So we assume that this statement is not true. What happens in that case? Well, we can multiply on the left by matrix A. So we get A times Vn plus 1 equals C1, A times V1 up to Cn times A times Vn. Well, they are all eigenvectors. So we get a lambda n plus 1 times Vn plus 1 for this one, C1 lambda 1 V1, and here is C1 lambda n Vn, equation 2. And then we do the following trick. We take lambda n plus 1 times the first equation, so lambda n plus 1 times this equation, so multiply this one all times by lambda n plus 1. And if we do that, the right hand sides uh, are different, but the left hand sides is the same as the second equation. So we take a difference with the second equation, so lambda and plus 1 times this one minus this one, those are the same, so we get a 0 over here. What for the other terms? We get a Cn1 lambda n plus 1 times V1 minus 
C1 lambda 1 times V1, so that's this term, and same for similarly for all the other terms, has to be zero. But now we can use our assumption. We know that the set consisting of V1, V2 up to Vn is independent. So here we have an equation weight times V1 plus weight times V2 plus V times V3 up to weight times Vn equals zero. Well, if this set V1 up to Vn is independent, that means that all weights have to be zero. So all those factors here in front of the vectors need to be zero. So this weight here has to be zero. But all eigenvalues are different. So this lambda m plus 1 minus lambda 1 is not zero. That means that the C1 has to be zero. And same for the other one. C1 has to be zero, C2 equals zero, etc. up to Cn equals zero. But if all these weights are zero, that means that Vn plus 1 would be the zero factor. And that is not possible because Vn plus 1 is an eigenvector. So our assumption over here was uh, wrong. So Sn plus 1 is not dependent. That means that Sn plus 1 is independent over here, which completes the induction step. So given the assumption that it's true up to capital N, we've shown that it's also true for capital N plus 1, which proves that this is true for all N, which means that the set V1 up to Vn is independent. So now we know that if you have different eigenvalues, the corresponding eigenvectors are independent.